My name is Osei Jumphy, CEO of Chillhound.com, and you are watching Ion Business. I am Danielle Hahn, co-founder of OC Angels, and you are watching Ion Business. Okay. My name is Mark Willingham, I'm CEO of Agent, and you're watching Ion Business. Welcome to Ion Business Innovations, where we look at innovative companies, their innovative products, and the innovative people that run those companies. Today, we're very fortunate to have with us Ose Jumphy. Welcome to the show. Thank Ose. you very much for having me. So, uh, you've been involved with uh, the Angel Game for about a year now. About Why a year, don't you yes. uh, tell us how you got started, um, and then we're going to want to do an update. So. Okay. Um, well, I'll try to keep it as uh, short and sweet as humanly possible. Um, okay. Basically, um, I was getting my MBA from Pepperdine, okay. and uh, my focus was entrepreneurship. So, uh, and then over the course, um, I just decided to find a pain, and I identified one. Okay. Um, and so, uh, my pain basically was in the event management website or okay. software business. Um, you know, me and my friends usually take a, a group trip every year, and uh, I'm the ringleader, so I had to put everything together. And it was a nightmare. I mean, getting everyone okay. to put in, actually say who's actually going to go. Um, getting everybody to put in the money they're supposed to put in, and there was no real solution out there for me that could combine both information sharing and also collecting payments. Okay. So from there, um, and during my my course, I created um, Chillhound.com, okay. um, and uh, so basically, it's an event management website that allows people to invite their friends, uh, manage RCPs, share information, but also basically crowdsource for their own events. So okay. it's a, you know, so it's. Pretty cool situation. We we created the uh, the website, got a lot of great traction, and uh, from there, um, it just just started networking. Met with uh, some of the TCA um, members, Tech over, Coast Angels, Tech Coast Angels, yeah. yes, uh, members in uh, in the Inland Empire. Got a chance okay. to uh, to present there, and um, you know they liked the idea as well. And okay. from there, we've just been you know in constant communication, trying to help grow this business. But there's a little milestone I think you left out, isn't there? Some event yeah. where you were uh, yeah. Winner. So at the uh, celebration for entrepreneurship for yep. Tech Coast Angels. Um, out of over 200 applicants who went in for their fast pitch competition, yep, yep. I actually had applied and um, <laughs> came out uh, winning best presentation. Well, yeah, all so, right. Yeah, very, Congratulations yeah, on that Yeah, we're very yeah. proud of that because yep. uh, it did a lot of things kind of, you know, to v validate the business concept and also, um, you know, it was, it was a great experience, you know, okay. seeing all these other companies and just going through it and getting a chance to talk to the other investors. Well, obviously, you want to focus mostly on your business and the product, mm -hmm. but uh, at the same time, if you won best presentation, <laughs> right. what what do you owe that to? What do you think made that the best presentation? Um, uh, part of it is is uh, really what I've learned you know, during my MBA program. Mm -hmm. um, also, the product itself, uh, you know, is very easy to talk about. <laughs> you know, okay. I think okay. if I was selling, uh, you know. Uh, uh, ice to Eskimos. Okay. <laughs> it might be a little bit harder to do a pitch. Interesting um, analogy, <laughs> right? <laughs> but you know, in this situation, it uh, you know it definitely um, was a product that goes to a direct pain that I think everybody feels at okay. some point okay. in time in their life. So I, I think that that plus the just the repetition and practice, okay. and uh, and what I've learned in school really helped me to be able to get over that hump. Okay. But I, I suspect you're being a little bit modest. I mean, there's some things about how you engage with people. Right. And how you do present yourself that, that make that sell because, right. you know, there's a lot of people up there that talking about their product that, <laughs> where it doesn't go near as well. That's so. true. I mean, yeah, a, a big part of it is, is uh, I like to connect with people. I've, I have, you know, my previous life, uh, I'm a little bit of a sales background. Okay. okay. Uh, yeah, okay. so I, uh, I definitely enjoy getting a chance to talk to people, sharing their experiences, okay. and, and so, you know, really connecting with folks okay. uh, that I just, you know, met is, you know, kind of my, one of my skills. So this may be a similar answer, but... So you won that competition, got won that prize. Right. Um, what's happened in the ensuing year that's most dramatic that you'd like to share with the audience? Well, uh, we started our uh, business to business model, uh, okay. so we call okay. it Chillhound Pro. And basically, what we found is uh, the same thing as you said, just getting a chance to talk to people and figure okay. out what businesses okay. want. 
um, most festivals, conferences, they need a, a platform that can really help connect them with their end customer. Okay. And uh, just in you know going out and, and talking to different groups, um, we got a chance to talk to a few film festivals okay. um, who enjoyed really what we what is that we did. So we basically kind of have our uh, business to business model where okay. what we okay. do is we facilitate a platform, um, software as a service basically okay. for okay. Uh, different. Uh, festivals and conferences yep. where we take all their micro events and give them connected uh, information. Okay. So for instance, yeah. right now we're putting together a festival for the Pan-African Film Festival, okay. which is um, the, one of the largest, uh, actually the largest um, African-American festival in America. Okay. Um, we're looking at about 35,000 people going through our platform, both getting information on each individual movie, because um, as okay. you know, they don't have a lot of billboards for independent films, okay. um, and at the same time being able to facilitate the payments for that. Okay. So what do you owe that particular success to? In other words, what kinds of things had to happen in terms of networking, in terms of getting the word out about your product? Yeah, and so um, a, a big part of it just had to do with uh, you know, leaning on the people that I knew, and like you okay. said before, just okay. connecting with folks. Um, okay. You know, What I did in order to get these opportunities was let people know what it is that I'm trying to do. Okay. Um, you know, and I got the right introductions, was able to write, talk to the right people, and again, you know, present the product um, in okay. a way that uh, people can understand and okay. are interested okay. in being a part okay. of. Okay. Now, that's going to be a key milestone, but what do you hope happens in the next uh, three, six, nine months or so? <laughs> uh, in the next three, six, nine months, since it is a software as a service, our main thing right now is mainly you know, just letting people know exactly what it is that we do. So we take each one of these wins that we get okay. Um, okay. and parlay that into future business. Okay. Okay. Uh, so from there, we want to be able to raise enough revenue so that we can show that the product actually has uh, you know, some good legs under it, and then hopefully okay. be able to go in for another raise so that okay. then we can get in salespeople for the development, okay. improve the product, and also get more word out there. So to get to this level of success and where you plan to go next, mm -hmm. what would you say were the most powerful influences or sources of help that made a difference? Um, really, the, the, the people around me, um, the, uh, the, my different advisors that I picked up, okay. um, the folks at the Tech Coast Angels, of course, okay. uh, you know, they, they definitely helped me. Uh, my, going back to Pepperdine and, and the uh, alumni and the okay. professors there, uh, I've been able to really rely on them. And it's just because this is my first business that I started. Okay. So okay. I've been able to rely on them for a lot of the information that I need in order to be successful. Okay. Um, and uh, just really getting a lot of positive feedback and energy behind me. Also, the one thing that I've done that I think definitely attributes to, uh, to some of my success is when people have given me advice, I've listened. Okay. Yeah, that's okay. why I think a, a lot of yeah, a lot of entrepreneurs Not when they hear do. <laughs> yeah, they, when they hear you know your baby might be kind of ugly, they <laughs> you know the, the fists come up. Uh, with, with me, you know, I, I ask the question why, and I try to fix okay. that problem. Okay. Okay. Well, that's a critical thing. Yeah. So that's that's a good lead into if you had to give some advice to other entrepreneurs following in your footsteps, uh, you mentioned a good one there. I mean, when you hear feedback, you ask, you know, why. Right. Uh, other tips like that that you might offer? Yeah, um, the other tips that I would have to say is, um, <clears throat> you know, uh, really make sure you believe in your product because okay. this is not okay. easy. Okay. Um, you know, there are definitely days that are great. You know, you're winning competitions, but, yep, you know, yep. there are definitely days when yep. things don't go your way. And if you don't believe in your product, it's going to be hard to get up okay. uh, when you get knocked down. Okay. Um, so that's number one. And then obviously number two is, um, you know, kind of going in, in the same vein of, of taking the advice is um, surround yourself with people that want to see you do well, okay. but at the same okay. time aren't going to lie to you. Okay. <laughs> that's, that's just very important. Yeah, that's I call that the buddy system. They, they need to tell it like it is, but they need to be on your side. Exactly. And actually doing it out of a spirit of helping, not trying to, you know, hammer you down <laughs> right. or something. But, um, well... It's been a great pleasure having you on the show, but is there any final words you'd like to offer the audience? It's a big chance to connect with them. Yeah, for any uh, you know new entrepreneur, like I said, you know we've we've been doing this for about a year, uh, you know, in some change. Um, for every new entrepreneur that's out there, the one piece of advice I always say kind of goes back to what I said before yep. is, you know, m make sure that you're getting information and always remember that the haters give you the answers to the test. <laughs> so when people are telling you why something won't work, yeah, listen to them. Okay. You know, and then okay. find a way to, to make them finally say, yeah, okay, yeah, that'll work. <laughs> well, you're very good at both listening and speaking, and it's, uh, it's been a great pleasure having you on the show. And all the best. And let us know how that big event turns out, okay? <laughs> we'll do. All right. All right thank thank you. you very much. All right. You have been watching Eye on Business Innovation. <laughs>
Welcome to Eye on Business Innovations, where we look at innovative companies, innovative products, and the innovative people that run those companies. Today, we are very fortunate to have with us Zandra Laskowski and Danielle Hahn. Welcome to the show, ladies. Thank you, Shan. Thank you, Shan. So we're here to talk about OC, which is a, a bit of an innovation. Um, can you tell the audience what you're doing at OC? OC is a women's angel investment group okay. founded here in Orange County. Okay. Now, what inspired this? What was behind the whole idea, Danielle? What did... So Zandra and I met through another angel group, and we had found that there was a need for women that wanted to get more involved with startups, and they just okay. didn't know how to take the, the proper steps to get more involved and also to help with funding. So what's the problem we're trying to solve here by having a women's angel group? Well, I've been an angel investor for the past three years here in Orange County, okay. and um, I've seen a lot of great companies, but I find that there are some that have concepts that speak more to women okay. and what we're interested in, interested in, and those companies tend not to receive a lot of attention in the traditional angel groups. So that's why we formed OC Angel Investors. So I, it's also my understanding that uh, in terms of raising capital, that women get a much smaller percentage of the, of the capital that's, that's right, available. That's right, Shan. That, that yeah. is right. And that's unfortunate, but we're trying to yeah. fix that problem with okay. our group. Okay. Now, you're doing a couple of different things with your angel group than maybe the traditional angel group. Danielle, can you just tell us about what some of your features are? One of the things that we offer in our angel group is workshops, educational workshops, okay. which we're holding uh, monthly. And they're three-hour workshops, which will teach everything from how to read a term sheet, to due diligence, to the things that are necessary whenever you're looking at potential investments. Now you've got a couple other features to it, as yeah. I understand, too. So what are those? Yes, well, we want to build a community within okay. our members. And what we love to see, and we just had that at our meeting yesterday, yeah. is we have members that, that come in and we have guests. Okay. And then afterwards, after we have the presentations, we ask the presenters to leave, and then it's kind of a round table. Okay. And everyone's free to speak. And what we ask them is, please give us some great feedback on what you saw with the companies okay. and give us some constructive feedback. Okay. And that's where we really learn who has what knowledge and what background and what value that can bring to the companies okay. that present it and what value that can bring to the other members. Okay. Now, in addition to the sort of within session features, you have a couple different components to what actually makes up OC, as I said. So there's a social component as well, There right? is a social component where we do hold monthly social events where we invite the members that we already have and we ask them to invite guests and friends and okay. we reach out to the community and find different events to, to have us attend. So how are you recruiting your members? How are you getting the word out? How are you letting people know that they can do this? Well, we just launched our website literally a few weeks ago. Okay. Okay. So it's through, we actually had a few... Uh, informal meetings okay. uh, in 2016, okay. and we had some companies present to our, our peop the people that, that attended, and one of the companies, Savvy Travelers, actually received funding okay. Okay. from our members. Okay. So we're very excited about that. But moving forward, it's going to be member referral okay. and also getting the word out like programs like this. Okay. Now, what, what kind of people would you like to see join your group? Anyone that's really interested, you know, man or woman, okay. <laughs> that's interested okay. in learning more about a angel investment, okay. and we offer the education piece, as Danielle has touched upon, that's okay. a little different. And so if they come in, they see a company, they want to follow, follow up with due diligence, okay. Okay. we have those tools available and that education available. Okay. Also, we've partnered with the Leatherby Center for Entrepreneurship okay. at the University of Chap <laughs> uh, Chapman University. So <laughs> Sounds excellent. <laughs> <laughs> Now, I remember my own experience starting with an angel group, this is a, a while back, um, that those first meetings are a little uncomfortable. You walk in the room, you don't know how the process works, you don't know who the other people are, you don't know what you're allowed to do behaviorally and so forth. How are you addressing that sort of discomfort that most people have when they join such a group? I feel that when you initially walk into our room, we're very inviting, and we okay. do the buddy system. So right. if somebody new is going to walk, if somebody, if a new potential member walks into the room, okay. I obviously we both welcome them, and we automatically buddy them up with somebody that's already in the room to kind of show them okay. the ropes, um, make them understand what our goal is, what, what we're doing in the room, and how we're all working together. And a lot of women have received that really well. Okay, really sounds enjoyed good. That. Sounds good. Now, um, what would you see as a, as a measure of success? So if we come back here in a year and have the same conversation, what would you like to have accomplished in that year? Well, 
obviously have some funding, some great innovations okay. with women-owned, in my ideal world, a woman-owned, women-founded company. Okay. But actually, any of the companies that have come in, if we can okay. see some success with some funding from our members and being, being able to really put our stamp on that, okay. that yeah. would be a fantastic goal okay. to reach. Okay. So what do you think the biggest challenges are going to be in, in getting that done? Well, I think it's getting, getting quality members okay. Okay. and companies that are at a stage where they're close to revenue or if not in revenue, that's going to be very compelling to the people in the room. And also to get the, the women comfortable enough to make such okay. a leap of faith in okay. some of these startups. Okay. I think that's going to be one of the challenges. So giving them enough education to where they feel comfortable. Now, how are you getting all the work done in this? In other words, it's is it just the two of you. Do you have other people involved? Or right now, it's just the two of it's us. The two of us, yes. We do have board members, so yes. they've been great in helping us with sending out emails, or getting the word out there, and setting up some of the events. But for the most part, it's the two of us. Okay. okay. So, what's the background? What's uh, what was the relationship before this, and how did you find each other? And what's the well, backstory? Well, we've met. Uh, in the summer of 2016 through, okay. through mutual friends okay. and we just got to know each other a little bit more socially okay. and we just realized and you know, we both had the passion of putting together a group like this okay. yeah. and we both bring so something a little different to the partnership okay. that's just a perfect combination. Mm -hmm. okay. I'm more member relations and uh, my background's in sales and marketing and business development okay. so that was really easy and, and she's really really great at helping to find the companies, vet the companies and, and help guide them to make sure that their deck and uh, that they're well prepared to present to our women. So if I can go one more level of detail for each of you, so how do you vet the companies and how do you vet the potential members? Well, um, the companies that, that are of interest and in, in okay. sectors that we feel might be interesting to our members, um, I, I, I interview them, I okay. look at their financials, I try to see where they're at with their raise. Okay. We typically look at companies that are looking anywhere from 500000 to their first $1 million, one and a half million okay. convertible note, okay. Series A, valuations between five and $10 million. Okay. So I go through that with the founders, and if we okay. find that, yes, they're structured really well and they're in a sector that would be of interest to our members, we go the next step and we invite them okay. to come and present. Now, what, what do you go through to attract, screen, select, and onboard members, mm. members of the, of the group? For all, oh, for it to be in the room, or do you mean for our board, like our? No, to be uh, to be a member of the angel group, to just be a, a participating. I don't know how to answer that. Well, uh, <laughs> members, it's really it's it's members are. Okay, let me move. Yeah, no, because I'm trying back. to think. Because most as of right now, it's been basically through referrals, yep. and a lot of the women that we want to be in the room, we would like them to be SEC accredited. Okay. But we are finding that a lot of entrepreneur women they like to be in the room because then they get that feedback. Okay. Okay. from okay. women that are accredited, okay. and, and it's, it helps them. So when eventually, whenever they decide to come in front of the room and present. Okay. I think we find, you know, just socially, when we're out networking, we talk to women we meet, that we meet, and men, and we explain to them the concept behind okay. OC Angel okay. Investors, and that's really where the, the interest comes. And then we okay. invite okay. them to check yeah. out a meeting, okay. and then it goes from there. The okay. magic kind of right. happens from right. there. Sounds good. So... We've got, uh, you know, you've had some experience with this already through other angel groups and now your own. Uh, any particular advice or recommendations you would give to either uh, the, the potential presenters or the potential members? For the potential presenters, it's definitely important that they have their financials, okay. financials ready, okay. um, year to date. They have their KPIs and, okay. you know, key performance indicators are okay. important, okay. as well as Advisory board, competition, competition. Okay. You know, those those okay. are some factors that okay. we definitely look at. Okay. And from a member standpoint, just really come and check us out, see okay. if we're a fit okay. for you, and right. if you know you're a fit for us. Okay, okay, sounds good. Well, we really appreciate having you on the show. All the best, and as we always say, we'd like to have you back to see what's transpired in, in the next few months, maybe the next couple of years. So, uh, good luck on your venture, and uh, all the best. Thank you for joining thank us. Thank you, Shan. Thank you, Shan. Thank you. Shan. Thank you. You have been watching Eye on Business Innovations. Good afternoon. This
This is David Friedman for Street Savvy Business on Ion Business. And I want to welcome Mark Willingham, CEO of Agent.com. Hi, David. Thank you for having me. That's not Secret Agent, right? No, well, there is a Secret Agent, but that's another story. All right. Well, you're certainly dressed in the appropriate entrepreneurial garb today, and hey, I appreciate that. Left my sunglasses at home. That's all right. It's raining outside in Southern California. But let's talk about some serious stuff. Let's talk about your background and how you got into Agent.com. Sure. Well, I'll, I'll summarize it real quickly because it's very diverse. I uh, basically am a marketing guy, so I know you like that. You're a marketing guy. I appreciate it. Strategy and marketing, I think, is the foundation of everything I've done. But my background goes from brand consulting to technology to high fashion and now into modeling. Ah, so that's a perfect, you know, so using a technology platform. Correct. To apply it to the fashion and modeling industry. Correct. So tell me about Agent.com. What's the real, what, what do they do? Well, at Agent, I mean, people talk about disruptive technology. And I like the word disruptive, but I don't like the connotation. We are disruptive. We are disruptive technology for the modeling industry. But disruptive has this negative connotation. And for me, disruption means bringing efficiency. So we look at the inefficiencies within the modeling industry. And if anyone out there who's dealt with hiring models, businesses, right. to hire them, they've felt the pain of it. And on the flip side, in a marketplace, you also have the models. And they feel a lot of pain in the business. We've come in, we've looked at that and said, look, we can provide a better solution with technology than an agency could do without it. And we're not trying to get rid of agencies or agents. We're just trying to make them better and make the industry better. All right, now, so a friend of mine is a model. Yes. Okay, and an actress. And she has an agent. Okay. So how would she use agent.com because it would seem to disintermediate the agent? It, it depends on the perspective. If you looked at an agent, they would say, wow, you don't need that. The problem is that models, when they basically get an agency, they're usually giving up their whole sales process to that agent. Right. And they step back and wait for business to happen. With us, we empower the model and say, you can go out and get the business, and you can drive that to the platform. A lot of the models on our platform have agents, and they easily give 10 or 15% of their commission to the agents that they need to pay them because they book business, and that's what their contract says. Got it. So that's how the agencies actually don't necessarily lose out. However, if the agency is not providing value to that model, she may find there's no need to have them. Ooh, that's tough on the agent. It, it so is. It keeps them on their toes, actually. But it does get better, quite frankly. We look at ourselves as being the sun and the solar system. So everyone in the industry has a touch point to us. Right. And so even the agencies that are really good and the agents that are good can actually leverage and license our tools and get access to our platform to be better. So that one, that one I like. So when I was in the um, in industry, corporate America, uh, we would hire talent. Yes. You know, for our trade shows or for doing store openings and all. So how would that work now? You know, with the corporate with with corporations, so I would be able to as a corporation license the technology under ours. Or would I go to my ad agency and? The ad agency license it under whatever the ad agency was? Correct. The ad agency or the modeling agency could license, or you can go directly to our platform. So they would leverage it and be able to do it themselves to provide the services to their own clients and also get access to a broader uh, inventory of models than they might otherwise having one or 200 that they represent directly. Got it. So, but as a company yourself, yourself you can go to our platform go into filters, find exactly what you want, hire them, and pay them directly through the platform. Okay. Now, um, what does an, um, a, an actress or an actor need to do to sign up for agent.com? Well, it's actually pretty simple. There's no, there's no fee or charge for the models or the clients that use the platform. They go in, but just like any agency, they actually are vetted. We look at the, at the model. We say, do they represent... Uh, the look that we think should be part of agent. Right. Uh, we have a very broad, we're not looking for a very specific things. We have a very broad um, spectrum of models. But they go in, they onboard themselves, and if they're approved, it's live, and, and businesses can, can uh, hire them. It's the flip side that gets a little tricky, because in the modeling industry, people have um, a scare of who's hiring them. 
So it's the vetting of the clients to ensure that they, yeah, that makes sense. it's a safe environment. Mm -hmm. And we really are, are aspiring to provide a better solution. So I have a friend, okay. quote, who is a mature uh, TV host, okay. looking to get into more, um, more, more shows. How would that person go about signing on board at agent.com? Well, she would actually just go, actually, at agent.com. Well, to he. Oh, he. Okay, go to agent.com and literally just download the app. And when you download the app, you just go in, you join, sign up, add uh, photos to the portfolio, create a few, um, answer a few questions, and then once you're approved, it's live. So it's a matter of you know, 24 hours goes from, hey, this is a cool concept, to, yes, I'm actually in charge of my career. No, no, no. Where are you introducing this, um, uh, in the app? Are you introducing it across the United States initially? I know it's on the yeah. it's an app. Or are you focusing in certain geographies? Certain geographies. It's, it's a great question. I mean, if you step back, and I know a lot of people compare to Uber when you're in a marketplace, right. but it's similar to that. We need to have both sides of that, of the equation, um, balanced for it to work. So it's New York, Los Angeles, Miami, and Las Vegas. And we have over 4,500 models already on our platform. So if you're in one of those cities and you go in and you look, you're going to find some fantastic talent. And that's the value that we're bringing right out of the gate is there's more um, information, more inventory, and more choices than you could have in a traditional agency. That's great. Well, I appreciate you uh, sharing agent.com, and I thank you for appearing on the show. I wish you a lot of success, and I hope a lot of models sign up. I know this mature talk show host will go on board Fantastic. and try to find out how to do it as well. <laughs> Uh, this is David Friedman for Street Savvy Business on Ion Business. Hope you enjoyed tonight's uh, discussion.